Recently, CCP, the creators of EVE Online, have been getting a lot of attention from the press because of its upcoming game release of Dust514 and its ability to connect in real time to the existing universe of EVE Online. Now, as an EVE Online player myself, I wanted to try to explain what CCP is trying to accomplish with the merging of Dust514 to the EVE Online universe. But in order for you to fully understand this, you must first know what EVE Online is. EVE Online is, at its core, a social game. It is about people and the relationships they form with one another. The setting? New Eden. The story of New Eden goes like this. When space travel became a profitable enterprise due to asteroid mining and production in a vacuum environment, it took no time at all for humanity to settle down on most of the planets and moons of our solar system. The ensuing economic boom allowed for great advances in technological research. Soon it became possible to travel vast distances in space. In the beginning, before warp or space bending technology, the distance between two star systems seemed an unconquerable obstacle. Later, jump gates merging gravity with negative energy created stable wormholes, which made travel between two distant places of space feasible within moments. Humanity swarmed out to distant star systems at an increasing rate. The next breakthrough was the development of jump drives based on warp technology. The early versions of jump drives were only capable of handling short distances, but later it became possible to jump between star systems without the need for jump gates. This enabled human expansion to spread across the universe like a viral outbreak. Soon, human settlements appeared in hundreds of star systems, dozens of which grew into huge colonies. Unfortunately, the process of expansion became more and more difficult due to bureaucracy. Almost every star system within jump range was now sold out before the actual colonization took place. Many had to wait years for their chance at a new home on a new world. This all changed suddenly when a new natural wormhole was discovered near the Canopus system. Although this phenomenon had already been proven to exist, this was the first occasion such a miracle had been found. The probes sent into the wormhole showed that the passage through it was stable, and that a new galaxy awaited explorers on the other side. Speculation was endless. This could be a galaxy far from our Milky Way, a galaxy clear across the universe, maybe another dimension, or even a parallel universe. The wormhole was called Eve, because new worlds meant new beginnings for many. A decision was made to build jump gates on both sides of Eve, but travel would be restricted only to special, reinforced ships fit to travel through the wormhole. Then came the news that scientists predicted EVE would close within a few decades. To maximize the opportunities EVE offered, people and equipment were transported to the other side and bases were established in the system. The system on the other side of EVE was appropriately dubbed New Eden. The two gates built on either side of EVE had to be huge since the nature of the wormhole was rather unpredictable. These were the greatest structures mankind had ever built. It took 200 years, even with the new, greater economic potential of humanity to construct them. New Eden was declared free for everyone who could venture there. Those who reached unclaimed spots first got the right to build a base there. Hundreds of companies started their own exploration and colonizing ventures to the new world as soon as the gates opened. Although Eve closed while construction of New Eden was still in progress, the gates remained operational, but after 70 years of flawless operation, tragedy struck. An unexplained phenomenon destroyed the gates and caused a severe magnetogravitational anomaly. The phenomenon made the gates useless, but worse, it collapsed the fragile stability of the newly prospering society in New Eden. The Eve gates still exist, but ships daring to fly too close to them are destroyed by the harmful gravitational storms. The effect of this catastrophe was instant and dramatic. Every settlement that was dependent on the highly developed industry of New Eden or on the Old World found itself isolated. Most of the colonies, due to their relative newness, were not yet self-sustainable. The lack of oxygen, food, 
and water sentenced many of the colonies to extinction. Those few settlements which survived slowly lost their knowledge and ability to produce high-tech industry because they lacked the tools or equipment to sustain it. The surviving enclaves lived separate from each other for eons. As time passed, environmental influences caused minor changes in their appearance and made them different from each other. Eventually, the survivors reclaimed space and re-entered the cosmos of New Eden. I think I'll stop it there for now uh, to find out whether or not people find this interesting at all. So if you like the video, like it, uh, favorite it, subscribe even. That's cool. Either way, bye.